Well, my name is Stephen Losey, and today I'll be talking to you about the silkworm moth. I raised silkworms. It started out as a hobby, and then it moved to trying to feed my two chameleons that I have, and now it's turned into a business. I'm going to go over today how you can raise your own silkworms. This life cycle goes through complete metamorphosis. We have egg, larva, pupa, and adult. So four like main life stages, right? These silkworm eggs, they were laid about, about five days ago. Within the first day, they were not this purplish black color. They were white, whitish yellow. And then they changed to the purple color. That means that they're fertilized. Once you see that, you, you can tell, you know, which one's fertilized and which one's not. Which is really nice because if you're trying to raise these, you know which ones you can expect to hatch. So after they do hatch, they go into the next life stage called the larval stage. The whole survival of the silkworm is really based on this stage. And they start out as little tiny caterpillars that we refer to as ants. This is not an ant, but this is a zebra silkworm because it's, it's white and black striped. This is fourth end star or so. So with each molt of the skin, the insect gets slightly larger and they have five of them, and then the fifth one molts into the pupil stage. Silkworms have been bred so many times and across so many different countries that we have multiple variations. There's literally three or four thousand different what we call strains or races of silkworms. I've got some are called Izam, named after the guy who designed that strain, that have warts, like warty bumps. Silkworms are badass. So after we go through the larval stage, we hit the pupil stage. This is the last molt of that caterpillar. So the caterpillar molts its last skin off and becomes this. Now this one, you can see in the front, it has all the parts you would expect pupae to have, antennae, eyes, legs, and wings, but there's no mouth. They have no gut system. They're made to mate and die. Most of the time, this pupa is inside of a cocoon. Different strains and races, they produce different cocoons. So here's a yellow one. Then we have a bright white one. These are what your silk is made out of, like silk pajamas, silk sheets, different things like that. And little of these, it breaks down the proteins that hold the silk together and you find the end and you start pulling it apart to spin and silk. The next life stage would be the moth. So this is a mating pair of silkworm moths. They can't fly anymore because they've been inbred over thousands of years. Like I mentioned earlier, the adult encloses from the pupa and the front of its face has a gland that produces this acid type substance that burns a hole through the cocoon. It gets out of the cocoon, pumps its wings up, and then the males and females find each other and start mating. And they lay eggs. 